Welcome back Rolling. to Work to the Witch with Lindsay Melnick and me, Alex Hampton. <laughs> <laughs> Featuring our special guest this week, Pluto. <laughs> Fuck you guys. <laughs> I'm kidding. Hi, Kaz. Hello. Hey, Kaz. Thank you for having me. I like doing podcasts in my own home. This is nice. No shoes. Chilling. No shoes, no shirt. Life is good. Life is good. New cat. <laughs> New cat. Well, thank you for taking the time of your busy day as a superstar. He better. What the fuck? <laughs> this is my fiance. <laughs> I'm going to make time for you. I know. I feel like you should spill the tea first, kind of. You can spill your version. I'll spill mine. Sure. I just want to know the the details. Yeah, so I met Lindsay, what, eight years ago? Yeah. Okay, okay. So met her on a couple of instances before I really knew who she was. I met her backstage at an Underachievers show. And, uh Yeah, I basically was not supposed to be there um, at all. It was like weird circumstances. My friend needed me to drop something off. I didn't go to the show even, and I was just there, met him in passing. But the first time in passing was actually at Wild Splash, and you were handing out CDs. Wow, yeah. CDs. Yeah. <laughs> I've been doing this a long time. So those two times in passing, and then I had a music video shoot in Tampa that I was doing for like another artist, you know, it was like a house party type music video, just a bunch of people there. I didn't really like being there, but this girl dropped her cup and I turned around and asked if it was hers and I look up and it's Lindsay. And she was the only one at the video not dressed for a music video, like she was in sweatpants and a say, hoodie. I was she was in a hoodie and sweatpants, I already know. Yeah, and I was like, this girl's vibe is awesome. I don't know. She's just different. And we hung out that night and I got her number from um, another girl that was there. And then that just started our journey. And I always knew that like I was drawn to her and into her like since we first met. But I don't know. I was just young and didn't really know what I wanted in life, period. And so we never like made anything official. We just had a really close relationship for all those years. And then I ended up moving to L.A. maybe five years ago, and we still stayed in contact for a little while. And all this time, Lindsay was, like, dating other random guys, too, throughout this journey. So and it I'm wasn't sure like you were dating yeah, random well, girls well, it wasn't like It wasn't like she was waiting around for me. You know, she was doing her thing. Um, and then, replacement. And then... I moved to LA. We were in contact for a while out there. And eventually I got into a relationship for a couple of years out there. And we stopped contact for a while. And she also got into a relationship. And they ended up being both horrible relationships for both of us. Karmic when we, partners. Yeah. Karmic partners. Yeah, big karmic Bringing you partners. back. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I think both of those relationships were like important for us to learn some lessons that we had to learn. But when we came back into each other's lives, I like got out of that toxic relationship. She was out of hers and I just reached out to her one day, not knowing what would come of it, but just to reach out and say, you know, I want to apologize for not honoring what you were to me more. She's always been the dopest person in my life. And I've always known that the love that we have for each other was just super genuine. And I don't know, it's a divine connection. And so I just reached out to her to say, like, I'm sorry for being a shit, not like honoring that. And that I've always loved you. I know that the love you have for me is like really genuine. And then that was last year, like right around this time last year. And we talked for like maybe two hours the day that we first reconnected. I was in my apartment and I just like, like my cat just stomped on my head and I woke up after like falling asleep on the couch, just binging movies the night before, you know, don't judge me. And I was just like awake, staring out of my window and just my phone went off and I just looked down and I was like, this has to be fake. Basically, this has to be a fake account. Like there's no fucking way. Did you, you think know? about not answering it? No, I knew I was gonna. <laughs> yeah. I knew I, I've always answered that shit. When he reached out to me, I always would answer. Mm -hmm. I was waiting on that message for years, not with like the intention of what I was gonna say, but I knew that basically, I knew that if God was gonna make this circle back towards me, like I would, I would have that conversation with God. Like, if you allow this to come back into my life, I'm going to handle it a lot differently and I'm going to be a lot more open because I think that 
in our story when we were getting to know each other and just kind of doing that dance for so many years. You know, for me, I had a really hard time expressing my needs or that I even wanted something serious from this person. And Playing cool girl. <sighs> played cool girl for way too yeah. long. And I told him, you know, I had this like haunting moment with him years ago where he actually asked me what I wanted from him. And I told him that I didn't want anything. And I thought that that was the best thing that I could give him because I knew just at that time that, I don't know, that like my highest form of love for him would be freedom. And, but then when that shit, when like he came back around, I was like, I'm not, fuck that shit. I'm not fucking playing. I'm going to tell him, you know, exactly what he is to me and what I want from him. You felt that you were ready and you knew that he was too. You know, no, it was more like ready or not, here I come. You know, I was like, (laughs) if he's not ready, then he's not ready. But I was dealing with that haunting feeling for three years of not speaking up. That's how long you guys went no contact. Yeah. Three years, no contact. Whoa. I mean, it was like the hardest three years ever. Like I knew and my version of the story, like towards the end of us talking before separation, I met with him on tour, actually one year when he was touring with um, Mod Sun. And I met him in Washington, D.C., and we had a great time, but I just remember the day before I left to go home, I just had this really, like, supernatural download in my head. I really felt like it was God. I felt like it was spirit telling me that I was going to be with this person, and so then um, I had that, like, download knowing moment, and then that was the last time I saw him for that three years. That's what was fucked up, is that... I was dealing with this like affirmation that I felt like spirit gave me that this is who I was going to marry. And then we separated for three years and I'm like, what the fuck, God? Like, what was the point of all of that? You know, but things come around and make sense. Eventually, Kid Cudi said it. (laughs) Oh, actually, no. The coolest part about this is that before he went to L.A., I was just Lindsay Rose Melnick. And then when he left, I became Florida Witch. So when he came back into my life, he was like, holy shit. Which he knew me being a psychic back in the day. And I remember us having conversations and he's like, you know, you just needed to be a psychic. That's who you are. You just need to be a witch. And he was always pushing me towards that even when he was watching me like go through corporate jobs and stuff like that. So when he went to LA, I just built myself up. I really channeled into that. And yes, I had a bunch of flings and like boyfriends and just whoever. And I hate to say it, but like you really just didn't mean shit. None of that was real. (laughs) I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But like, you know, you all knew I was going to end up right here. But, you know, I just I had to go through my own stuff. And so did he. And I had a really, really bad relationship right before him that was that karmic one that really just turned me on my head. And it really just like, not for nothing, it took me out of my ego because it totally wrecked me. It wrecked me in a way of not being heartbroken over the loss of a person, but it wrecked me because it was traumatic. It was abusive. It was fucked up. So I went through all of that and then just like went through my healing and then, whoa, light at the end of the tunnel like when he came back in my life there's no disconnection it truly felt like I found my way home and I think this goes to show what happens when you let go of toxic people to make room for the people in your life who matter yeah my relationship was equally as toxic and like I was coming out of that relationship and just like in this real heavy place you know I was like working on an album at that time it was Father's Day I was like dealing with the first sober Father's Day from like any substances going through this time Toxic breakup, basically barely even had anywhere to live. Like I had left that person with the house and like it was in their name. So I was just in this weird, difficult time and was about to go on a three month tour, longest tour that I've ever done. And uh, wasn't like anticipating any light at the end of that tunnel either. It's crazy how fast and like easy things came together once I separated myself from that. Once I made that leap, you know, within four months of that, we'd be engaged and we're getting married in February. So like Alex came in to come fix my life as like a 
assistant manager, um, Mommy. And she was there for like a few months. So she watched this entire like reunion happen. And yeah. I was like, how do I condense this story to <laughs> tell you how big of a fucking deal this is? It just, it's so cool because like I also attribute it to like purging out negative attachments. And it's just like all of these people were yes. added into my life. I, I found Lindsay when I left a toxic friendship and moved mm-hmm. out. This is enough. I'm done. And look look at the family we have now. I know. This is like a this. family for real. I love your relationship so much because it's very playful, but also at the same time, you both really listen to each other. And I think there can be a lot to be learned from the way you both communicate. Yeah, I think from my perspective, we're like a testament of how like easy the right partner can be. I think both of us struggled throughout all the years, like trying to make the wrong partners work. For myself as a man, I was always like, I can be better in a relationship than the relationship will be good. And so like in that three year hellhole one, I tried my hardest to just be a good man. And I thought that that would be the answer to like the relationship being good. But what I learned being here is that I don't think like much changed about me coming from the last year of that relationship into this one. Like I didn't really change much. I had done a lot of work on myself as a person, but being with the right person made everything easier. We just came up on a year since like we really reconnected and it's been the easiest, most blissful, most peaceful, fulfilling year of my 30 years existing. And um, yeah, I just can't wait to marry this person and continue doing that for the rest of my life. I can see it in the both of you. Me too. <laughs> yeah. This ties into when we're talking about like divine masculine and divine feminine and, you know, whatever role you choose in the partnership, which again, I'd just like to reiterate, it really has nothing to do with gender. Those two roles, if you're in like a monogamous relationship, that one person will take each role. And so like for him as like this divine masculine, he really does stay super grounded. I'll commit him a certain way and he just like remains so grounded. I don't know. Like he just is that rock. I feel like that really is super masculine because I think that that's the problem with a lot of these relationships is, you know, straight men especially. Like they have a really bad habit of just like going into even more of a, you know, emotional shit storm. I feel like I'm in an adult relationship truly you know even when I'm on my childish shit you know he's very like just grown and I think our biggest like thing is that we just don't have any desire to like tear each other down ever I genuinely feel that if we do even have a disagreement like just neither of us is trying to attack the other person's character or like make an enemy out of each other it's weird even for me calling these things we have arguments because like I've been in other relationships where I was punching walls and this person was throwing shit at me and raising our voices and downing each other and like we just don't do any of that here you know it's like we might disagree on something but there's never this like malicious intent and we're always like on each other's side and it it never lasts more than five ten minutes you know I think that that's the key too is just kind of like looking at what you're arguing about and knowing that that's the enemy it's not each other that's the enemy ever by the end of it no matter what both parties even if like the initial person that should say sorry both parties always say sorry for something no matter what we're arguing about we both find a reason to say sorry because it just there's a reason why that pressure builds and combusts in certain areas and it really does take two to tango on a lot of shit and also like for me I feel like an activist in a lot of ways there's certain things that I feel really passionately about and I've never had to fight them on any subject. And that's such a huge thing for me. Well, I think it's great that you both went and watched the Barbie movie together. (laughs) Can we talk about the Barbie movie? Yeah, can we talk about that? I I mean, I could cry just because I felt so seen. I mean, Mm -hmm. like that movie was so important. I mean, my dad saw it with my mom. I hope that people can take their sons. Bring your partner. Yeah, just bring the men in your life to that movie because it's really important. I trust Cass as a partner for you because he had no negative things to say. I liked it more than Oppenheimer. I'm going to vent about this <laughs> yeah, right I Well, because like just naturally all the guys in my life are like Oppenheimer, Oppenheimer, blah, blah, blah. And I didn't <laughs> really know anything about the Barbie movie. I just was going to take her because, you know, she's a girl and she wanted to see it. And I was, I had no problem with that. But I was pleasantly surprised i thought the you mo- wore pink for me i did i even wore a pink mesh shirt for her. <laughs> uh i was just like impressed because the movie was genuinely like witty i thought it was super funny it had lighthearted takes on like men and 
uh, women dynamics and the world being like kind of a patriarchy and male run thing. I, I just thought it was really well executed. It highlighted the experience of being a woman a lot to me because I, you know, live and love this person. And so I know what she goes through just being a woman in this world. And so I felt all the moments of the movie where I just like looked over and I already knew she was like melting because mm. she felt seen by what was being said or what they were talking about. And then just from the perspective of like the way it talked about the human experience and just how painful and difficult it is to be a human. Like I'm an artist to the core. So I really relate to that message and that message is super important to me in whatever form of art. So I was just blown away going into that movie, not expecting anything. And then it actually being really deep and genuinely touching on these things. And then I went and saw Oppenheimer and I didn't feel anything really remotely moved by the movie. So, and then it was like funny going on the internet and seeing like conservative personalities, like reacting to the Barbie movie and feeling like it was like negative i was like get over yourself every 99 percent of every other movie is a male-centered story like women have like the notebook um mean what's, girls mean yeah. girls what's the one you love uh, uh pride and prejudice, pride and, prejudice <laughs> and the barbie movie but but 99 percent of other movies are like about the male experience so i just think like anybody that was bothered by that has like a really small penis and needs to like reassess their perspective art that is empowering to women is important so I thought it was really awesome for that. And I don't mind, I don't mind pink. I actually heard a bunch of songs in it that I really liked too. So 10 out of 10 Barbie movie. Do you feel Knuff? (laughs) (laughs) I added the I'm just Ken song to my playlist. So with all of that being said to say, when we're talking about feminine energy, okay, and he just talked about how he's an artist, and that's a big reason why, you know, I fuck with you so heavy. (laughs) Put that in your vows, please. I fuck with you so heavy that it's like, you know, he's definitely balanced in his feminine. For all of the men out there that are artists, if you are not balanced in your feminine, you're not creating art at all. That's a period point blank. Quote me on that shit. Argue with the IRS, not me, okay? Literally, Feminine energy is creativity. If you disrespect feminine energy or you disrespect women, you're like cursing yourself if you're an artist. It makes no fucking sense. Misogynists can't be artists, period. You're not allowed. (laughs) I support this message 100% as a real artist. Listen, if it's not him, it's nobody. And I feel like I always knew that. He was just it for me. Nobody's ever conjured up the way that he makes me feel. And it is something that is supernatural to me. Yes, it covers all the bases of like what your dating podcast or your dating book would say. Yes, it's it's comfortable. It doesn't induce anxiety. Like you guys are great with each other. I mean, he's a Venus in Virgo. He must like love me for real. Because you <laughs> have to like the ick. The perfectionism. The perfectionism. It's like it's that's, high. that's crazy. You got to be perfect. You well, got to have a uh, Venus in Sag, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but that though, like when you're in love with somebody and you have a Venus in Sag, it's not like this um nightmare thing. It's just when he's being really cute or I want to like love him, I'll just like pinch him or like hit him or you're bite him. Always play fighting. Yeah. What's your love language with Venus and Virgo? Is it acts of service? I mean, cleanliness, I feel like that's, you know, kind of cliche. Well, I just like cleanliness. I don't think that that's my <laughs> love language. I, what are all the love languages? Like gifts, not it. Words of affirmation. Yeah. Like I think physical we both, touch. We both have one. like a worship complex. So I think we both like to like praise hear, king. Hear it. Yeah. Praise. praise king. That's what it is. We both have a praise king. <laughs> so I think we both like to hear it. What are the other ones? Uh, uh, physical touch. Yeah. I like that one too we're yeah. both big on that is, yeah. is venus and virgo why just everybody else in history has icked me out probably yes. oh yeah because i 100%. know within like five minutes of being around somebody i'm like i hate this person like this. <laughs> right after the first day i'm like Ew, the way they fucking chewed their food <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cass is a virgo sun with a virgo venus and a scorpio rising so and a virgo moon oh my god a lot of Virgo. He's got to love. I got to be doing something. Yeah. I don't know. 
You just did. look at me and you like, I like love this mess. Yeah, it's funny because you reference yourself as a mess sometimes, but I think you're like the most put together person that I know. You feel that way about my side of the sink? Oh, uh, if we're talking about like the, <laughs> <laughs> the way the way that you keep the bathroom, absolutely not. But just the way that you like perceive life, I've never really like heard an opinion on an issue or something where I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you? I just think you have a great outlook on anything and you're very much a spiritual guide to me. Thank you. I would say that that ties in, again, masculine and feminine, really. I definitely lead spiritually. And I think that it's a part of the masculine's job to allow the feminine to do so. And I think that that's where a lot of relationships fall short is the masculine doesn't want to let the feminine uh, speak about literally anything. Worldly issues, social issues, the issues going on in the relationship, it's always like swept under the carpet or something. Toxic masculinity. Toxic masculinity, not letting the feminine be heard in any capacity. And um, I knew I was never, ever going to be in that type of relationship ever. I mean, that shit would ick me out more than anything. Honestly, I think like all dating podcasts pretty much just have shit advice when it comes to men and women's dynamic. Like I I got tired of like being on the internet to some extent because it felt like every fucking podcast I seen is like girls talk about how to fucking get guys with money and use guys and then guys are looking for a girl with negative three body count and fucking shuts the fuck up and like rubs your feet makes you a sandwich when you doesn't come go home. out it's just like everything that i hear in the dating atmosphere it's funny because all these people are fucking single and miserable like i haven't i don't really hear that from like people in a happy marriage that are running a podcast but i just feel like i haven't heard anybody in the dating podcast atmosphere talk about the like just magic that happens when you meet somebody that like God chooses for you. You know, it's like, I think people do a lot of like quantifying and qualifying of like, here's the qualities I need in a partner. Women got to be like this. Men have to and be like where's this. where's God? Yeah. Where's God in that? Yeah. And just, you're yeah. not, I, I think like when you really love somebody, it comes from a place that's like outside of yourself. When I met her, I just knew that I was like, loved this person but I didn't. I barely even knew anything about her when I first met her. You know, I met her at a party in sweatpants and jeans. You know, it's like I didn't even. I didn't know anything about her, and but I knew that there was this like divine pool between us. And so I think just like the whole dating atmosphere on the internet just talks about people like they're like items in a store and like here's the qualities that you need and this will equal a good marriage and like I just don't agree with any of that. I think men and women are extremely unique. People are unique and people sway between masculine and feminine and maybe different relationships have different dynamics of what that balance looks like. But I just think it's about like honoring God and like spirit when it pulls you to somebody and having the capacity to like recognize uh, what a good partner looks like. None of it has to do with like God and spirit. It's the same fucking advice about like men should be allowed to cheat and women need to have no body count and fucking blah, 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 blah. It's just all the dumbest shit. Those aren't the men that I look up to anyways. Like growing up, I didn't have a lot of like really good examples of solid men in my life, but I was weary on the internet and like selective of like finding the ones that really spoke to what resonated with me. And so like the list of guys that I follow on the internet that like really represent it for me, it's it's such a small list. And they're not about the shit that all these podcasts talk about. Like the the men that I follow are straight up killers and earners and protectors, but they like honor their relationships. They honor women. But- I have seen Cass's explore page and it does not trigger me <laughs> at all. <laughs> and I've seen his friends explore page and it is the same one and guys are like lost on the internet because they just see all sorts of different women and and guys living these different lifestyles and they are just obsessed with this like idea of like options and things like that and it's probably the same for women 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 struggle i think on the other end of like comparing themselves to other women the patriarchy made it so so do not participate the patriarchy made it so so do not participate this is a public service announcement this is a public service announcement and i and i repeat the patriarchy made it so do not participate it's it's a con job it's a serious 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 con
con job. This is not the way that uh, shit was intended to go, you know, because I think that women are in comparison when they're seeking the male gaze and the male validation. And babe, I don't blame you. Again, it's easy to slip into that brainwashing. We literally have all been there. I catch myself all the time. You know, that's just honest. And it's just, we have to just reel it back in and realize, okay, like I'm just, I'm not going to look to my left. I'm not going to look to my right. I'm going to look in the mirror, you know, find the things about myself that I do love and then scream that shit. And you know? Cass makes that super easy for you because he yeah. keeps yeah. you comfortable and he keeps you secure. Oh, dude. I like me so as you're a person not even anyways, worried about it. I, there's like not a competitive bone in my body. Like I've always been that way. I've never been into sports, never been into anything that was competitive. It's something that I have like never understood. And so if I was put in a race feeling like I was competing with another girl or another like situation or whatever, I just like immediately would drop out. It just doesn't work on me at all because I'm like, fuck that. She to me is like 100% it for me. And I'm like, it's not even a competition. Well, you know what it was? Okay. We talk about this all the time of like some of the highlighted moments of when like we knew we were in love with each other. And one of the instances was uh, we were taking a shower and he just kneeled down and he started washing my feet and he was like I have been reading a lot about certain parts of the world and in, in a lot of parts of the world and in ancient times this was like you know something that you do when you respect and you love somebody and I just like I locked up and mm -hmm. I was like this is this person is um really blowing me away because I was early 20s like that's unheard of I, I knew that nobody else was going to wash my feet this is something really real and symbolic and um it was beautiful it was a moment I mean a especially in like my feminist heart where I was like, yeah. wow, he'll kneel for me. You know, he'll bend a knee to me. That was crazy. It makes me think about the topic of submissions. We were talking about this. That's a word you hear like thrown around in the dating podcast Good world heart. of like submitting and how it mostly comes from the perspective of men just being like the right woman's going to fucking submit to you, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> but I think the thing that like people leave out is that in a divine partnership, you submit to each other. And that, I mean, for one, a man that's worthy to submit to anyways is like a good man and so i think a lot of those podcasts leave that out they just think like oh because i make money or i work out i'm a good man no it's like really about your character and like does your woman respect you enough to like lead you and your tribe and your family into the right direction but i think when you're in a partnership that you really love each other that you just naturally submit to each other like on certain topics and i just think that that's what real love is it's like it doesn't make either of us lesser than like we just lean on each each other's strengths uh, that comes with a lot of trust and respect that you both have with each other also the dating podcast world like men talk about women submitting to them like a woman submit should submit to you that they're, they're not even talking about women that they genuinely deeply love they're just talking about somebody they're fucking or a girl that's in a rotation for them fuck all those guys <laughs> That was great. I'm excited to hear what you guys have to say to one another now. Pluto and I <laughs> are going to step out and you guys can talk more love and entertain. Let's get it. Okay. Part two. I love you. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I think that our relationship has made a lot of people twin flame believers. That's something that I'll talk about too, because I know that a lot of people, I think that they confuse and they mistake a twin flame relationship for, for a karmic one. Because a karmic relationship, although terrible, right, most of the time, uh, is also, as much as I hate to admit, you know, magnetic in its own way. There's a reason why my mentor, Sarah, calls it the rubber band effect. Like, there's a reason why we were separated, like, on purpose. And that's another thing, you know, just to be transparent. It was, like, hard because neither one of us, like, let ourselves be totally angry about separating in the way that we did because when we both took our kind of like bird's eye view and zoomed out like I just I can't see it going any other way I, I literally I literally can't like I, I just I feel like we would have fell apart but I'll tell you what you know anybody who is dealing with a twin flame 
relationship because this is mine. Like it's something I remember Sarah, again, my <laughs> mentor, she would always say, you know better than me. You know better than any anybody in the world. Like, is this your twin? Like, is this this person? And I just knew it. Like, I absolutely knew it. And um, it's one of those things where it takes so much patience it takes so much patience. And if God would have delivered me this person when I was screaming for him, like there were so many times that were so dark for me, like in separation and just a lot of confusion. And um, it just required patience because if he would have been delivered at that time, neither one of us were, you know, ready in any capacity. When I look at the timing, it was so on time. So Anyways, that's like my extendo way of saying that if you're going through like a twin flame journey, it requires that patience and that understanding. And Khalil Gibran actually wrote in The Prophet, which is my favorite book, he wrote on love that if love finds you worthy, and if you feel too naked or too transparent for it, however he said it, excuse me, I'm like butchering it, but if you feel too naked, too transparent, then you, you know, you better cover up your nakedness and go home because as it crowns you, it will also crucify you. And that's exactly what this did. Not in a malicious way where people say with the karmic relationship or the karmic partner where that person is, you know, cussing you out, abusing you. And it, we, it's not that we had any of that. It was the separation and the absence of each other that crucified us. You know, it was the pride and the fear of like commitment in certain areas that kept us from being naked and being transparent and being vulnerable and diving into each other. It was it was like excruciating from my perspective. Anyways, all that being said to say, it's not an easy journey. It requires a lot of patience, but you have to also, even when you're on the journey, respect it and respect what love is as a visitor to you, that if it finds you worthy then it's something that you have to participate in and you can't take for granted and you also can't, you know, be disrespectful towards it. So it's like I hear a lot of people just kind of being like, fuck this, fuck this, fuck that, fuck this. And and that's kind of going out to my girls a little bit, you know, when I'm talking about it here, because I know that it's a rough, rough journey. And I just wish that you guys would respect it in certain areas, even if it is visiting you for a time being and it leaves and you know it's going to come back. Respect it for what it is and don't be mean to it. And even for like relationships that don't come back, I just think when you feel like it's love, everybody in whatever journey that they're going through, like when you feel like it's love, you just have to honor that and take the journey. I mean, it's better. What, what's the quote in the prophet where he talks about like, if you say no, you won't cry all of your tears and you won't laugh Ooh, all your laughter. Oh, I God. just love that. I, I can't remember exactly how the passage <sighs> goes, but he's just basically saying like, you could choose to say no to love and like, you'll still cry and laugh. It just won't be all of your laughter and it won't be all of your tears. And like, it's just a testament for like how you just, you got to feel it all when you dive into it. Yeah, that like brings me back because that passage in that book got me through this journey so much. And that is like a huge reminder. How many tears do you want to shed? How deeply do you want to shed them? And how much do you want to laugh? You know, if you only want to do that partially, then turn your face towards, you know, something else that isn't going to require sacrifice because every love does. And so we started this podcast off with like how great, you know, everything is. And I think that that was important. But in this like part, I just <laughs> want to reiterate, it's not like we came out unscathed. It's great now you know? because we're like at this point where we're engaged and we're getting married. But yeah, the journey was not for the weak of heart. It was super painful and confusing. And like, I don't know, even like the times that we were connected and we weren't ready or like weren't ready to speak our truth or like commit to each other. We suffered so much because of that. You know, I was in such a depressed state and like lacked so much self-love. So it was just painful in, in all areas. And then like the karmic relationships that we encountered, like in the meantime, those were super painful. Karmic relationships can like be powerful and full of love and attraction and things like this, but they're really there for a temporary amount of time to teach you a lesson. And I don't know, in my experience, they end painfully and just come with a lot of lessons. But in the moment, you feel like this is a person that you're supposed to be with. And then the twin flame journey is more of a lifelong, your paths are going to cross no matter what. 
type of journey. And <laughs> even if you say no to it at some point, it's going to cross your path because you're meant to cross paths and love this person. And um, it's also doesn't have to be karmic in that. Like, I mean, obviously any relationship there's lessons in, but it's not a temporary passing to teach you a lesson. It's like really learning to deeply love and honor somebody for life. It's really um, my favorite way to explain Twin Flames is that Zeus was so pissed at the humans, so pissed that he created them with four arms and four legs, and then he cut them in half, and then he said, you guys are all fated to just wander the earth and find your other path, or mm. your other half, excuse mm. me. You're basically fated to <laughs> wander the earth and find your other half, and that's what a twin flame feels like it's really um it's inevitable when they say it's a mirror it is but it's not a mirror in likeness it's not a mirror in you know you look like maybe i mean maybe some twin flames do you know totally but it's about being like holy shit the meat in there you know is like the same we have our differences in personality and things like that but yeah you really do feel like cut from the exact same cloth as me and like I just feel more at home here. Definitely more at home than when I was by myself. I was like, Zeus, where the fuck is my dad? This sucks. <laughs> yeah. You know, I've like loved you in a lot of different forms. That's mm -hmm. for sure. Over the years. And <sighs> I don't know. Well, it's I just, just crazy because hindsight is twenty twenty. It's It's easy to like look back on this now where we're at and be like, oh, all this was God's divine plan. And it makes so much sense. And when we came back into each other's lives, we knew we were ready. And we're like, wow, OK, God, I see you. But in the moment, in those last 10 years, it was like, what the fuck is going on? Like, 100%. I'm confused. Is this person for me? What the fuck am I doing over here? Like, it feels like you're in a fucking hurricane. 100%. Trying to figure it out. And then, I don't know, I just think that's the tail period with life and with God and spirit is that even when it's tumultuous, you just have to trust that it's heading you somewhere. I didn't expect this to become what it was like in, at any point in this journey. And it's like, it's been a hundred times better than I could have like even wished for. And I think that's the cool thing about God is like, it's okay to have plans. That, that's why I get annoyed with the dating podcast mm -hmm. is like quantifying relationships and like quantifying people's characteristics and stuff. You have to let, let room for God because if you allow room for God to put things into your life, they'll be even greater than you can imagine. 100%. I feel like that was like a big thing. And that's something that we still do is just like pray that God stays in the center between us. And that's really important. It, I mean, every part of this has felt supernatural, even with, you know, like sick, dark parts of it where we were connecting that we weren't thinking <laughs> we weren't. That was crazy when we got back Whoa. together. You know, I was on the road um, on a tour, like right after we reconnected. And so we talked every night for months but it was fucking wild. This is like when it was like in your face that we're a twin flame connection because there's so many like ways that we interconnected over the years without even knowing. I remember a crazy one. We I got one after you. Okay. <laughs> I, I We were talking about the movie uh, Apocalypto because the head tat that I got on my face, like the teeth around my face is inspired by this movie Apocalypto and this like warlord ruler guy that has this skull attached to him and this jaw mounted to his um, shoulders and we were talking about this she told me that the day she watched Apocalypto that she had this like serious like reaction to it and that it shook her up inside and that she had to stop watching the movie it was like this serious emotional and spiritual reaction to the movie and I was like what day did you see that movie and I was like that's I said that I did it during quarantine yeah and know? I was like that's when I got my head tat and it was inspired by that movie and I was like what day was that and I was like I'm gonna send you the date that I I got my head tat and I send her a screenshot of me getting the head tat and she sends me a screenshot of her texting her mentor about the movie watching it December 30th it was the exact same day there were like numerous little interactions like that over the years that I'm like we were connected in that moment and like it just I, I experienced things like that in life and I'm like I can't deny spirit and God and that there's something 
way larger at work intertwining things because you just can't explain things like that. Like, no way. And even like the day that we saw each other for the first time, okay, since reconnecting, he came back and he surprised me at my apartment. It was showed up right to her fucking house. It was a huge thing. So that happened. And then that night, you know, don't judge him for it. But he's like, I got booked for this podcast in St. Pete, like come, you know, with me. And I was like, okay, so I rode with him. And there was this local artist that was there that had a painting for him, a, a gift. Okay. And we're standing there about to leave. And the artist hands him the painting. And he said, this is called Twin Flames. We looked at each other and we were just like, we got in the car and just cried. We were just like, this is, this is like too much. And then, and then not to mention the mural that said artist did of him is right behind the psychic shop that I used to read at. That was crazy. Yeah. That's, that one's fucking The same artist painted a mural of me in St. Pete. We went to visit it and it's on the wall that is behind the psychic shop that she used to work at. I'm just like, so many things like that that I'm like how the fuck it's too much and also this one's gonna go a little bit darker so don't judge me but kind of like a mild trauma dump here and this is for the girlies because I know that you know they know how God has sick jokes sometimes but um I actually went through a miscarriage in 2021 and I was in recovery laying in my bed and I was scrolling on Twitter and this is when like him and I were not connected at all. We were in no contact and literally that day it showed up on my feed because somebody else liked it. He said he was going on a rant about how he wants to be a father and he wants to have children and have a baby and I was like this is not the fucking time (laughs) God. I was like this is so sick. So sometimes God has a sick sense. Sometimes it's sick. Sometimes it's not cute. I was sitting there in so much pain uh, you know, just emotionally, spiritually, and physically. And I'm just looking at my phone and I'm like, I fucking hate him. God, like, please. You know, it's just kind of like, don't make God scream. Yeah, if you're not listening to him, he's like, I'll make it louder and louder and louder. Yeah, I'll turn it up. Listen. Yeah. yeah, we listened. We got it right. We got lessons along the way. If we start a family, we're going to be parents together. We're going to grieve together at some point. We're going to mm-hmm. fucking move to Costa Rica and not talk to anybody. Well, it's going to be crazy. Down for all of it. Yeah. I mean, you know, the journey's just starting, but I think that God's like, have this moment of bliss before life happens, you know? Yeah. Wow. I know, right? <laughs> it's kind of crazy to think about. Yeah. That it really is like just starting. We're about to get married and start on this whole journey. Like this is the first year we've lived together and stuff like that. This is actually the only significant other I've ever lived with. I've never lived with a significant other. I got other. it. I got it. Yeah. I admit that I was slippery though. I was hard to catch. She was slippery as fuck. For eight years, she was slipping and sliding around. I was like, what do you want? And she was just like, I think when we reconnected and started talking about it, we really realized that you were more avoidant than me because we like depending on me and being a young rock star and like not being ready. (laughs) We like to blame it on me, but it was really her because there were multiple moments of clarity that I had where I was like, I love you. And she was like, like, I remember when we oh, connected we and you're like, it. you're like, you never even said you love me. I'm like, what are you talking about? I said, I loved you all the time. She's like, well, well you didn't say in love. You said like, I thought you meant like a friend. That's I'm a like, big <laughs> difference. He would look at me. Well, okay. Looking back on it, it was stupid because he would have that moment. He would look at me, you know, and be like, I love you. And I would be like, curved. She'd be like, cool. I'd be like, love you too. <laughs> I'd be like, I love you too. Um, and I would just go home and be like, yeah, I don't know. It, I, I was just a really like negative thinker when it came to me too. Me too. You know, I was going shit. through a lot of just dark shit in my life at that time. So God, I don't know. God's timing is better than ours. Yeah, for sure. All right, I'm getting kicked off. They used me for what they needed. Get the hell out of here. I love you. I love you. I want to cry. That was sweet. Don't cry. I was so hopeless for so long that I'm like, look, it exists. You can find a man that loves you and you are so worthy of love. It just doesn't matter. It's not like I have some special sauce. Like it's just about being yourself. Well, besides like, Enchantress. Well, oh, sh- that is the sauce. <laughs> Sometimes I wear that before dinner and then he's just can't. Yeah, and then I get, I get I get ate up and then I, I'm like, <laughs> I wore Enchantress. <laughs> and she's like, fuck. <laughs>
Anyways, but yeah, like every girly is special and really deserves to be loved in that way. And let me tell you something. If it wasn't like this, I would not fucking do it. I would not end up with anybody. I would choose to be a universal soulmate, you know, but really you deserve the world. You really just don't have to settle, you know, and it's not like everybody's going to have everything together. Like nobody's going to have everything together, but it's just about you being loved the way that you want to be loved it's that, that you deserve to be loved exactly the way that you deserve to be loved and um it's alive and well and so there's hope but again if you don't find that or are like not being respected then you can just be a universal soulmate and that's cool too but don't, don't settle don't settle don't settle if you listen to this and you're like holy shit my man sucks it's venus retrograde fucking dump his ass <laughs> revisit your expectations on love and what you want out of it and Come to terms with what you want September 4th. 100%. Right? Yeah, I think so. 100%. There's love out there. They're a great example of it. Don't be so cynical. Yeah, yeah. You know what? That's what it is. Don't be so cynical. Be accepting of like the hardships and embrace them. That's one of the many experiences in this human experience that was actually gifted to us, you know? So even the heartbreak, even the hard stuff, be grateful for it. But also know that you just deserve the best. You do. We do. All right. Well, that's where to the witch guys yeah thanks guys love you love you